right. Good morning, everybody. We are, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Classic. Don't do that, do that. All right, so good morning everybody. This is the OpenStack Tour de Force tutorial. Um, this is a tutorial that is billed for one hour, which is extremely short for the content that we are allowed to contain. Um, however, as we're going into the lunch break afterward, I'll be happy to take those questions, those questions later, just in case we do happen to run out of time and not cover all of the questions that you may have. Um, this is, if you want to follow along, uh, the tutorial itself on your own with the locked images, you are welcome to do so. However, it is not required. The tutorial is being recorded. It's going to be available for your perusal afterward. And of course, the version two results are also going to be available on mysterylaunchbreak.app for you to download. And by the way, all of the slides here are free for you to use for personal use under the terms and references of the license and the Open Source Cloud Global and GitHub Podcast Unlimited policy. So for those of you who do want to follow along, this is how you do it. You grab the files, um, you start with the box, you create one instance of the puppet.ova virtual appliance, you create three instances of the OpenStack OVA virtual appliance, you name them Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and make sure you reinitialize their Mac addresses when you create them. You can log in to all of these boxes as root with the password of OpenStack. And for the OpenStack nodes, you have to run a little script. It's called Pixar Post. It runs in the flash, or it's, it's stored in the flash root directory. If you run that as root, Pixar Post Alice, Pixar Post Bob, Pixar Post Charlie, then it will make that OpenStack virtual appliance three different nodes with three different network configurations, name Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and you can get to use them for this tutorial. Um, once you reboot, you're ready to go. There's nothing that you need to do on the Puppet node itself. It will just come up and reconfigure as a Puppet at the end. Okay, so much for that. Uh, we're going to start with the OpenStack Tour de Force, plus titled Cloud from Scratch in no time. This is the third time that we're presenting this tutorial. The first time was at OpCon in Portland this year. Then my colleague Adolfo Grandic did uh, a version of this talk at Cloud Open North America in New Orleans, and now we're here in Scotland, and we're doing it again. But this time we are doing it for the OpenStack Havana release, which just dropped last week. So, uh, you may be wondering just who the heck I am. Uh, my name is Florian. There are a few links on this slide here. There is my sort of uh, corporate bio. I am one of the co-founders and I'm instructor and principal consultant at Effecto. Uh, the top link here is my official corporate page. The second one, the short link here, is uh, my Google+. Plus. You can uh, get in touch with me by email at florian at effecto.com. I'm one of those strange holdouts that don't maintain a personal Twitter account, but we do have a company uh, Twitter presence at Effecto. And if you want to know more about our training work that we do around OpenStack, I encourage you to visit academy.effecto.com. That has all of the information about our training services. Now, uh, for those of you, can I have a show of hands, please? Who in here is familiar with OpenStack in the sense that they have looked at OpenStack or deployed an OpenStack instance in production or in testing up to this point? Quite a few, okay, great. The rest are complete OpenStack novices. Can I just have a nod your head? Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, quick, very brief overview of uh, the OpenStack architecture. OpenStack is uh, comprised of a set of services, all of them under the ASL 2.0 license, all written in Python, and all working together using RESTful uh, JSON API. At the core of everything, we have an identity service called Keystone. 
which provides authentication, authorization, and access control, and also maintains the concept of tenants, which means we can logically subdivide a physical OpenStack cloud into multiple logical tenants. And then every object that we create within that cloud belongs to a certain tenant. Um, all our access control patterns and all that can be um, set up on a per, or are set up on a per tenant basis. Uh, we then have an image store codenamed Lance in OpenStack. The image store basically maintains our gold images, gold master images for our virtual workloads, our virtual guests. Uh, those run in OpenStack Compute, also known as Nova. Um, and uh, OpenStack Compute can support a number of SAS hypervisors. The canonical way of doing it might arguably be libvirt versus KVM, which is what we're doing here in this tutorial today, but it equally supports uh, the Zen hypervisors, um, um, VMware, Two different flavors, actually. One is the center one, if that would be a good sign of record. Um, it supports Hyper-V, and um, it has recently gained uh, much improved support, support for uh, container-based virtualizations rather than hardware emulation-based virtualizations as well. Uh, we have a network service, uh, which in the Grizzly release still used to be called Fauna. It has since been renamed and is now called Nusan. Nusan, the OpenStack networking service, provides network connectivity within our virtual tenants, between virtual machines, and also to the outside world. We have a block storage service, codenamed Finger, provides persistent block storage to guests. And we also have an object storage service, codenamed Swift, which provides restful object storage within an OpenStack cloud. And then we have a unified OpenStack dashboard, codenamed Horizon, which acts as a unified UI across all these services. It is web-based, runs, um, it's based on Django, UHD runs uh, in Apache normally and provides unified UI for all of them. And there are two new facilities in OpenStack Havana uh, released last week and developed over the past six months which uh, are facilities for uh, metering and alert services, now project codenamed Telemeter, and an orchestration engine that provides both its own native API and an AWS Cloud, uh, Cloud Trainer Azure API built on top of Heap. So those are two more uh, OpenStack sub-projects that just happened to take OpenStack, a official OpenStack release from uh, last week, OpenStack Telemeter and OpenStack Havana. So uh, from this um, logical overview of the OpenStack architecture, uh, what follows is the concept of node roles. And node roles are the sort of logical or atomic and composable connections in the OpenStack cloud. Uh, they're atomic because they usually not break down further. They are composable because it's very common for a single node to have multiple of these roles. Depending on your scale up requirements, you may then uh, spread them out across multiple physical boxes. Um, and those node roles are, there's an infrastructure node, which runs a database and a mesh queuing server. Uh, so relational database is normally MySQL, but Postgres will also support it. Um, and a message queue server, an MQT server. Uh, most people will be using a routing queue, but Apache Cupid is also supported, and then there is support for Azure and Azure as well, although that is still at the mesh limitation. Then we have the authentication node which runs the OpenStack Identity Service, codenamed Ethan, which provides authentication and a service catalog. We have an API node, which provides RESTful API endpoints to OpenStack services. A controller node, which provides scheduling and registration services that are internal to OpenStack. So for example, with the controller node, you're not having to control uh, things like um, what uh, specific compute node am I scheduling this specific guest to run on, um, and other things. Then we have uh, the network node, which provides network connectivity within the cloud and also to public external networks. And we have, of course, the Kubo node. Usually we have several of these, um, and it's not unusual to have an OpenStack cloud with hundreds or thousands of compute nodes, which of course runs, hosts, and runs uh, virtual machines that it controls over guests. Then we have uh, storage nodes, one or several, 
the device is the blackboard itself and there is a very basic implementation of the single the open plan blackboard for the group which is uh, known as the plan ice charging which is what we're here to going to be using here in this tutorial for demonstration purposes um, however there is a truckload of external drivers that are supported by general williams that will be existing um, either open source or commercially licensed uh, shortly such as for example Ceph, which is highly popular as a scale out um, service for self account storage um, ProxFS is also supported for that same purpose but also things like uh, free car left turn um, various other things that they will touch on then we have a dashboard link which provides a unified user interface to our cloud admins here um, and then we have a metering node this is new in Havana um, this is a node type that collects metering data from a unified event stream which provides a set of counters and groupers uh, related to metering of uh, our open plan cloud and finally we have an orchestration node which runs an orchestration engine for complex guest workloads so this is the the, uh, the node that will be an orchestration engine in uh, open plan in our setup uh, as for the tutorial architecture we have uh, a total of four different nodes alex is the one that uh, holds the majority of our control related services so alex is our infrastructure node which runs our database uh, uh, rpc server our authentication node or api node controller node storage node dashboard node and uh, also the metering and orchestration node although i don't know whether the time that we're going to have in this tutorial is going to permit us to actually go to the metering and orchestration stuff but if you're taking it with you it will be easy for you to execute that on your boxes and then have uh, Keylonder and Pete at your disposal as well then we have bob that's our compute node it will be running our virtual workloads one of the specific workloads that we're going to walk through in our demonstration tutorial we have charlie that's our network node that's the node that provides access to the outside world and uh, runs services that ensure that the virtual machines can talk together within the cloud as well and of course uh, we have our puppet master node because we're going to be deploying this whole open plan cloud for puppet because if we were not automating this we should be in a demo that would take us the next three days and we want to do it in one hour so obviously we are going to be automating that with a um, system automation uh, framework in this case we chose puppet uh, you can also deploy open plan with um, uh, with chef you can deploy open plan with a variety of other tools and uh, you can do crazy things like deploy open plan within open plan and use open plan tools that does not provide a not android or shortcut um, okay um, we are going to be using a collection of puppet modules that are available for configuring open plan services those are hosted on blackboard that's where we do a community project um, that uh, that uh, develops um, third-party um, additions to open stack third-party in the sense that um, what is being developed on stackboard is not or not yet part of open stack proper but uh, the nice thing is it uses the entire continuous um, integration and continuous deployment and sampling infrastructure that the rest of open stack also uses which is great uh, which means that most of the stuff that is on stackboards actually has uh, much of the same quality level as what OpenStack itself has and um, things in terms of um, revision control um, peer review etc that's what this is all about um, we are going to set use a simple set of wrappers um, on top of these puppet modules on stackboard we call this kick stack because it's something that you use just to start your open stack um, it's really a very very thin wrapper around what is upstream in stackboard as part of the puppet um, open stack module there okay uh, we are going to use the puppet dashboard Here. There we go. Uh, 
that is a secure puppet dashboard. It runs on the node named Puppet. You can access it depending on how you set up your virtual uh, network. Uh, you can either access this through its actual IP address, which is listed at 3.3.3.300, or you can just connect to localhost port 3000 because it should be a uh, port forward for, for you. Um, there is no need to use Puppet Dashboard. Kickstack uses, um, you can use Kickstack with any Puppet ENC and Puppet External Node Classifier. For those of you who are familiar with Puppet, that is the way to, uh, that's uh, a facility that Puppet use, can use to externally classify nodes, put them into specific classes, et cetera, apply parameters and variables to them. And uh, the Puppet dashboard is but one implementation of Puppet ENC. There's others, such as Performin, which is very popular with many Puppet heads, um, including the Puppet heads at CERN that run the largest open source cloud in Europe at this time. Um, and you could actually be writing your own ENC uh, because all that Puppet uses is a set of the open YAML and that is the only thing that it does. So um, that is our Puppet dashboard here. And what we also have or are going to have is the OpenStack dashboard because eventually down the road now, obviously not here yet because that is something that we are going to deploy as part of this setup. So that's our node named Puppet. I'm not really going to need to do anything here right now. So I'm going to move our case to our node named Alice. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to have it check in with Puppet. We do go down to Space Update Test. And uh, we are now going to have that uh, checked in with Puppet for the first time. Yes, you can crucify me now. For purposes of this tutorial alone, I have actually set up Puppet for auto sign of these specified certificates. Do not ever do this in production. And by the way, do not deploy these virtual machines in production because they have my SSH public key in slash root dot SSH slash dot slash key. So if you actually deploy this in production and you make it acceptable at the internet, you can't get in. We're going to do that on the other node as well. So we have them all check in for Puppet for the first time. There we go. And while that is chugging along, we go back to our node named Alice. And we switch to our Puppet dashboard. So there's two nodes that have checked in. Lovely. And then we're going to check in for the third one shortly. There we go. Alice Bob Charlie. Very creatively, I use the domain name thejunkhole.com. Um, and uh, this is what we are going to be using for the rest of this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are just going to add these three nodes to the Kickstack group such that we can apply these parameters that we have set in the Puppet dashboard globally uh, for all of these nodes. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting the group in Kickstack, I create the header, and I'm selecting it here, and we just want to be mindful about changing the name of the node. So it's got that, it's got all of these nodes here in the same group. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to work with our node named Alice. And Alice, we are going to make the infrastructure node, the authentication node, and the API node. API, infrastructure, and then auth. Again, for purposes of demonstration, obviously I don't have Puppet run as a dashboard service, but I'm just invoking it manually. If you were using this in production, obviously you would be running it as a dashboard service with a um, uh, regress handler. Um, so while that thing is chugging along, uh, let me tell you what the OpenStack API node actually does. 
Um, so in OpenStack, uh, all of our nodes, uh, all of our services run on um, or expose endpoints that are uh, RESTful. Uh, we can interact with them with a standard HTTP or HTTPS client, and what we're doing is uh, we are pretty much bouncing around the, the traffic um, that we're getting. And that is true for all of the OpenStack services. That is true for um, Cinder as an SDK service, for Nova as an SDK service, for Nexus, Yolamida, and a bunch of uh, all others. And um, what these services do is they use two means of uh, communication with other services. So if there's anything that um, actually requires to be persistent, so if, if at any time a service needs to tell another service, um, okay, here's a piece of data that you are going to do coming forth forevermore, then all of that goes into a relational database. So as I said earlier, typically we use MySQL here. Uh, PostgreSQL to support it, SQLite as well, but obviously SQLite is going to be used in a more primary class. And the other uh, means of communication that these nodes use is uh, AMQT. And uh, AMQT is the common message bus that we're using for communication. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to say, it's not, you should take it with a pinch of salt. It's not completely set in stone, but the, the rough rule is if there's anything that needs to be known for uh, two other nodes uh, for more than 30 seconds, it typically goes into the relational database. And if it's less, then that is information that gets loaded into the relational bus. And um, those are the two things that we are creating here in this step. Uh, we are um, installing MySQL, or what, what we're currently doing is we're installing MySQL and um, installing um, Rabbit to do it as well. And then um, there's a Rabbit to do service. And then subsequently, um, it's also going to go to the databases, which I'll just show you over here. So we've got all the databases that we need. And I just want to um, move over this quickly here so we can cover this at the end so we can get an understanding of the actual API services. Um, I want to conclude this rather quickly um, so I can actually show you how we can interact with the OpenStack uh, class. Um, it is important to understand, and you, you're going to see this in a moment, that as soon as we have our OpenStack API services um, or API endpoints available, then we can actually interact with our OpenStack cloud, even though we don't, for some of these services, for some of these APIs, we actually don't have um, information security uh, checks. Um, now, that may sound strange, but it's actually um, uh, really um, sound and reasonable design. Uh, which is we want our API services to be decoupled from uh, the actual information security services. So um, at any time you happen to lose connection with a batch of service or uh, the, the batch of service actually moves from one node to another, then um, the system is just calling out that batch by itself and using the, um, the information that the system itself provides. Yes, the questions are always here. Okay, <laughs> great to hear. Uh, we, uh, what we do is we um, put your node named Alice into three pitchback classes, uh, pitchback node off, pitchback node um, API, and pitchback node enabler. Those are the three classes, and they also need to be part of the OpenStack Cloud Nodes. Okay, there's Alice. OpenStack, all lowercase. So while we're waiting for this to chug along, um, this is also configuring Keystone for us. Um, as I said, Keystone is the OpenStack identity service. That is the service that is um, responsible for providing OpenStack um, authentication, authorization, and access control. And uh, Keystone also manages the OpenStack endpoints. So if we 
um, and what this uh, job here does for us is create a very open stack RFC file, which we can now sort and now provide um, our uh, open stack um, credentials for. So if we do that, we can actually go ahead and see a few things in our stack. Oops. And as of right now, we only have one endpoint in it, and this was already interacting with an open stack side using open stack tools. So I use keystone endpoint list to basically tell, ask OpenStack, okay, where are my API endpoints? And uh, right now I only have one, which is keystone itself, arguably, because that's the only service that um, I am currently actually configured. And uh, with the next run, we are actually going to configure the API for the keystone itself. And um, okay, and why the keystone? or we have already configured uh, the identity service. The next thing that we're doing is we're configuring API endpoints for all of the other services. It's actually more than we're showing in the slide here. We're not doing it just for network and block storage and compute and image, but we're also doing it for main um, for services, so for uh, kilometer and speed. However, we are leaving out um, object storage simply because it's not really useful to also add just object storage onto these three nodes that we have here, which is the service domain, the object domain, and the service domain host. Oops, where are my notes? By the way, um, this itself is not the only service that provides OpenStack object storage. There's other services as well, most notably uh, Chef through the Lex Gateway has a means of interacting with the Chef store and has this as well as this as well. And uh, likewise, LuxFS has what it um, calls as endearingly UFO, Unified File and Object Storage, which allows you to interact with a LuxFS file system as if it were a Chef um, um, uh, system. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Amazon S3, um, that will be, that will um, spread to Amelia, a RESTful object storage in that it has a command line interface. Um, so what S3 is to AWS, um, this is more or less to OpenStack. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. Okay, so that is a handful of services there. block storage service, which we have right now, and then we have also speed storage. This is for main storage. Main and kernel should be just good to use for now. API configuration. Um, of course, you know, this is somewhat slower than it would be on an actual Chef box or hover, because what I'm doing here is I'm going to move the Chef box laptop drive, uh, which is most likely going to be on my iPhone line. And that is uh, something that you're probably going to be seeing on your boxes as well, specifically if you're using kernel. So um, if your laptop is not on this speed, um, then that is a problem. So Node and Alice is just our API node, and then we've got kernel 
interacting with our open source project. at this point. Uh, it does do something, which is it actually talks to the open source API services, um, but we can um, change the list here. So we can change this, and we can print list. API node and authentication node, and also our storage, controller, and dashboard. Our node named Bob is a compute node.
generated for you and you can log in here with a username or admin to your current password. Okay. This is what the OpenStack dashboard looks like. Uh, by this time we actually already have a fully functional uh, OpenStack cloud <laughs> except that it doesn't have any compute nodes yet and except that it doesn't have outside networks. But we're going to fix that in a minute. But what you can see here is that uh, all of the services that we have defined are uh, already available. And wait a minute, there they are. So those are all the API services. And we can interact with all of those. And we can interact with our specific tenants as well. So uh, one thing that I'm really excited about this presentation is um, I can upload this image. There we go. And um, the image type that um, we're going to be using is uh, an image, uh, is, a, um, is a distribution called Curve. It's a super tiny micro distribution, but it runs really well um, in the cloud workloads. So I can do here is I can create this image. And I am going to upload it. format, we're going to insert, there we go. As you can see, um, OpenStack supports a number of image types, such as AMIs as well, a, a global micro that you can go and read from, um, and it then supports, I think, uh, GIF format and PCAP, of course, such as PCAP E format, um, such as Rawdiff, uh, BDI, which comes out of VirtualBox, um, BHD, which comes out of Hyper-V, So that's 
support run by Alex, that's that video, and uh, you can connect to it on that specific node. Um, that's 192.168.192.111, um, just on board reader. Um, if you are currently unable to uh, connect to that, that may be due to your um, VirtualBox network configuration, and I can show you afterward how you can do that. Okay? Likewise, what you can also do if you're familiar with VirtualBox is on your node named Alex, you can create a script authority for port 80, uh, or that is any local port in your machine, you should be able to connect to that in that way. Another thing that I typically want to do uh, with my OpenStack tenant is I want to uh, be able to ensure that I can log into machines that I create, preferably using create. So what I can do here is create my default machine. I'll go to port 80. thing that I also do whenever I do this demo setup is I create um, a flavor. Flavors are, um, as you can see here, they're uh, various virtual machine types that we can create. Uh, tiny, small, medium, large, and x-large are is the typical, uh, typical flavors. Here when I'm demoing this on my laptop, I usually like to add another flavor, uh, which manipulate them with uh, Nova flavor list, but um, there, so you have to set flavors globally for the entire cloud, and then you can make them available per tenant. It is not something you can create on a per tenant level. So you also need um, an admin for the for the local team to be able to manipulate the list. Even though we don't have a network node at this point, we can already interact with the network server. And there's more than one way to do that, as with anything in OpenStack. Um, so for example, we could now go ahead and create network here, or create router here, etc. cetera. Um, but for the time being, we don't have anything like that. No network, no routers, no connections, okay? Now anything that you can manipulate in OpenStack, you can manipulate either through the OpenStack Web View, the OpenStack dashboard, Horizon, which is what we're doing here, uh, or you can manipulate it through the JSON API directly, or you can be using one of the OpenStack CLIs, which are perfectly scriptable. So that is something that we're gonna be doing here. So here on Alex, there's a little script here. Let's see if I can get that up and working. There's a little 
to do it, what's called new, new prime number. And if we run that, then even though we currently don't have any network nodes that are implementing these networks, that doesn't matter. We can still still use them because we're only interacting with um, the new prime API. And uh, that, in turn, is talking to a uh, relational database. So um, it's now creating an, a port, uh, a network, and a gateway uh, for that request. And lo and behold, there's our network topology that has changed. Uh, so what we have created is uh, two, uh, well, one virtual network. That's the one that you see in orange here that we call AxiNet. That's the one that is only going to be um, implemented uh, within DOE tunnels, actually, in the uh, OpenStack network. And then we have a virtual router, which we call provider router, um, and that then connects to an external network, which is actually a physical network. we're waiting for is uh, for our network node to not only um, create the network services, but uh, to also launch um, a, an L3 routing agent um, and a DHCP agent and uh, also a connect service box agent so that we can make sure that our boxes do not Share everything here for the actual launch of this instance. So we're going to create a virtual machine in our availability zone that we call Nova, so that we can actually share it. We are going to group this from an image, namely the image that we previously uploaded. Subsequently, we want to be able to connect to this uh, machine using my SSH VPAN. And I am going to attach it to the AxiNet network. So let me show it again. Let me show it to you there. Just in case. 
if you're wondering what those crazy lightning scenes were, you probably will What OpenStack does for you, what OpenStack Neutron does for you, is um, it builds uh, open vSpin GUI tunnels uh, for you. And in this case, uh, you can already see the scaffolding from the, from the uh, compute node, uh, which is that we have a pull bridge, we have an integration bridge, and um, they are tunneled to, uh, or they are cached um, into one another here. But what we are not seeing as yet is the, um, is the tunnels themselves, the GUI tunnels themselves, which are going to be brought up by the Neutron services in the next couple of minutes or so. GUI tunnels, so these boxes can now provide current network. They're being placed into GUI tunnels and uh, are then relayed over to the network node. We shall see the other side of what we have here. All of that is taken care of for you by Neutron, by the way. This has nothing to do with the, the there is no puppet master here. All of that is by the API service itself. And um, what you can also see is OSI has the network namespaces, which um, these are using heavily for uh, routing in HTTP. So now, moment of truth, let's launch this virtual machine. So that instance is currently spawning. So that means what happened in the background here is the Nova API talked to the Nova scheduler, the Nova scheduler service is responsible for selecting a compute node that is suitable for uh, launching this uh, virtual machine based on a variety of parameters that we can, um, that we can configure. Um, in this case, it's easy because we have only one uh, virtual machine, uh, one compute node that is typically associated with virtual machines. Uh, what also happens is um, the uh, respective uh, image namely the shared face image that we have here is being transmitted over to the compute node and um, IP addresses are being allocated from Neutron for um, this new instance. It has received the IP address 10553 and if we take a look here, uh, we should be able to see a startup log from this virtual machine. What it has done here is it has received um, IP addresses from the Neutron GHCP service, that is where you can see down here. Uh, it obtained leads for 10.5.3, it adds a DNS server uh, as required, and then it connects to a magic URL, which is the Nova API, uh, the Nova Metadata API service, where it actually fetches its own metadata, such as, for example, the SHD um, that shared, and that is a complete boot of storage here. Uh, we also should see a, um, a full log here if we, um, if we selected that here. And so now let's take a look here at Charlie. And here is our bullet node, so let's see. And what I had hoped, oh, hey. instance, I would also want to allocate a floating IP address that is, if you're familiar with AWS, that's what elastic IPs are in AWS, that's floating IPs in OpenStack. Uh, in the XSign network, we have a floating IP address pool from which we can now allocate an IP address and associate that with 
that in. Now we're going to have to go here and maybe do settings. There we go. Here is our here is our box and then here is our console key. So in uh, 63 minutes from zero, that is to say from complete bare uh, Ubuntu 12.04, no open stack, no trace of open stack on it. Um, a bit of Puppet, even on a slow box, uh, a really slow box, at least by OLive within 63 minutes, we're, we're getting to a completely working uh, OpenStack cloud uh, that can actually fire up a virtual machine. Um, and not only can it fire up a virtual machine, but if there's a fleet mistake, we can also uh, create a volume here. So let's take a look here. So here's our uh, box partitions. That only has a DBA device. Of course, there is a single device that is the data center. I'm going to create a volume that I can test. I'm going to give it one gig in size. I want to make it empty. No fill. I could also create a volume of up to 50 gig. Here is the volume that I want to create it. In case it's dead, in case we are curious, the way this is implemented in this case is I can go to D, authors, Alice, and we take a look at the actual page of this repository. That is the volume that has just been created for us and exported as uh, I7 target completely automatically. that when I open the box here, uh, it has just been patched in the backup is fully on and fuzzy. And the machine itself doesn't even care, whoops, it doesn't even care whether it's ice fuzzy or something completely different because as far as it sees, it's just another virtual device that has been added to it. Um, we are, we're out of time, so unfortunately I don't have the opportunity to go into metering and, uh, and orchestration. However, if uh, you would like to reproduce this tutorial, you may do so at any time. The only thing is that you need to do is you need to add the metering and orchestration node classes to presumably your node named Alice, um, and then you will be able to um, interact with um, a heat stack or um, kilometer statistics as well. Um, I apologize for going slightly over time, um, and I apologize for the I.O. issues here. Um, I hope this was interesting for you nonetheless. Um, what this tutorial was meant to show you is that uh, in a very short amount of time, and trust me, if you're doing this on real hardware, you can do it in 20 minutes or less, um, you can build an OpenStack Havana Cloud, a fully, uh, fully fledged and fully uh, workable and working uh, OpenStack uh, Cloud that you can then use to deploy uh, your virtual instances. So uh, within uh, 60 minutes on this machine or 20 minutes on um, an actual piece of set of hardware, you can go from building the cloud to actually using the cloud, and that's ultimately what you want to do. You don't want to be held up with, um, with building your cloud for, uh, for too long. Um, a few final words. Um, if you like this talk, um, it would be great if you could uh, let us know. Um, Hasekto is our Twitter handle. If you want to refer back to these slides or use them for a presentation of your own, you're certainly welcome to do so. Um, the sources are in the, um, I'm sorry, there's actually an error there. It was LTEU 2013 um, in my, uh, in my personal uh, GitHub repo. So that's github.com slash sghawk 
slash LTU 2013. Um, and by the way, if you're interested in my slides from Linuxcon Europe last year, just substitute 2013 with 2012. And um, if you want to learn more about OpenStack, then I also encourage you to check out our schedule. It's the UK schedule, sorry. Um, which is on our website. Uh, we do have classes coming up in uh, Munich later this year and also in uh, Bangalore, and we have more in Sao Paulo um, at, in January. So if you're interested in that, please do take a look. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, if you have any further questions, I'll be happy to stick around. If you do not, please enjoy your lunch and enjoy your afternoon. Have a great rest of your time. Thank you.